at Oak Hill Missionary Baptist Church located here at 435 Orange Street, Houston, Texas, um, 77029. I want to let you know we thank God for this privilege and this opportunity. And also we'll let you know that we're coming to your Facebook Live because of the mandate that's going on with uh, the disease that we're facing now. Uh, we have discontinued service here at the church until further notice. And we're following the guidelines of what the scripture says in 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17. It says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or in the governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of god honor all men love the brethren fear god honor the king so that was the reason why that we're no longer having services uh, inside the sanctuary and we're having facebook live we thank you right now for this opportunity for the ones of you that have joined in with us we thank God for the privilege of an opportunity of giving us another day. What I do want to have acknowledged is our special prayer list for April the 5th, 2020. Uh, let's continue to pray for Sister D. Shelton, Sister P. Garrett, Sister Helen Harrison. Let's lift up in prayer Deacon Wilford Simon and family, especially his 97-year-old aunt. Brother Elam and family, Sister Powell and family, Sister Barbara Devine and family, Sister Linda Braxton. Sister Marie Black, the Lee family, Sister Jackie Lee and family, Sister Lynn Taylor and family, Sister Barbara Ann Hardy and family, Sister Ellen Eason and family, Brother Quentin Jones Jr. and family, Brother Jerry Eskridge and family, Brother Kelvin Casey and family, Sister Cynthia Armstead and family, the Lawton family, the Davis family, the Anderson family, and Sister Princess Watkins and family. Special prayer for William Simon. Clifford Ford, Willie Johnson, Harold Taylor, Kent Thou, Marlon Lee, Cameron Eason, Willie Eason, Michael Tippleton, Blake Mitchell, Harley Dye, Eldridge Barty, Robin Nuez, Guadalupe Bannon, Kent Thou, Judith Mary, Pam Banks, Samantha Eason, Thelma Mitchell, Regina Miles, uh, Rebecca Johnson, Valerie Jones, Tina Bannon, Haleronto Sotos, Crystal Gillum, Havana Sierras, Rhonda Jacobs, Diane Mitchell, Lorraine Jones, Glenda Mitchell, Kwan Windsor Windsor, the Salon family, the Torres family, the Cartwright family, the Davenport family, Reverend Rufus and Linda Wheat, Reverend Allen and family, Sister M.A. Hardy, uh, Keisha Hardy and family, Regina Lopez and her two grandsons, Lorenzo and Jefferson. Special prayer for Daryl Fosher, Ms. Dorothy Fosher, uh, Sister Divine and Sister Powell's brother and mother, and their uncle, Mr. A. Jack. Special prayer for Miss Merlene, Miss Kimberly Gallagher, uh, Sister Faith Stevens, Serena Stevens, Sister E. Edwards, Sheila Douglas, Brother Henry, Mrs. Daisy, Mr. Colton, Mr. Kobe Vickers, and Mr. Durley. Special prayer for the Beverly family and the Holly family, the town of bereavement. Uh, also, we have a special prayer for the five diligent members. Brother John. We also want to family bereavement, uh, Brother Deacon Jones, in, in that time of bereavement. Uh, special prayer for the five diligent members, especially Sister Greenwood, Sister Dibble, <laughs> Sister Smith. We want to have also a special prayer for the Wilkes family in their time of bereavement. Also, we want to pray for the pastor of Fidelity, Rodney Thomas. Uh, special prayer for the American Baptist Progressive State Sunday School and Baptist Training Union Congress. Bronson. We also would like to lift up the Bronson family now in that time of bereavement. Uh, also, we'd like to lift up the Union Baptist District Association of Texas, the American Baptist Progressive State Convention of Texas, and special prayer for the Open Door Mission. Let's continue to pray for our youth, our loved ones behind prison bars, our loved ones in the military overseas in a foreign land. 
Special prayer for the mayor, all the city officials in the city of Houston, the police officers in the states, the mayors in all the states, the governors of all the states, and the president of the United States of America. And most of all, we want to pray for the whole wide world during this coronavirus. Church, gracious master, we thank you again for another privilege and another day to give you some praise and give you some glory. Yes, sir. Gracious master, we want to realize and acknowledge that we are all under your submission. Yes. We want to give you praise, Master, because of who you are and because yes. of who you are Thank is you. why we're here to give you praise and give you glory. Holy yes. Master, if you don't mind, touch the names that have been lifted up on our prayer list and the ones that have asked for prayer and you know who they are. Yes. I know you can touch with your long finger of loving kindness and your multitude yes. of tender mercy. Master, we realize that last night was our last night on this earth. Our bed when our cooling board and our sheets when our riding clothes, but you yes. touched us with your long finger of loving kindness and your multitude of tender mercy. And you reached down in the low land of sorrow, and you gave us another day. You opened up our eyes to see a day we never seen before, nor will we ever see again. And Father, we just want to tell you to tell King Jesus, ride on like he used to ride, yes. because you got a right to ride. And while you're riding, stop by if you don't mind, gracious master, yes. and give you some praise and give you some glory. We want to thank you for food on our table, clothes on our back, and shelter of our head. But most of all, we want to thank you for the gift you gave to mankind, your only begotten son who lived, died, and rose again, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Yes. Now, right on, King Jesus, because you're worthy of all your praise and yes. worthy glory yes. for coming and saving a wretch like me. We give you praise and we give you glory. In yes. Jesus' mighty master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. I want to look at tonight, well, this morning. I want to touch base with you on something that is our faith. We want to look at the book of Numbers. It's in the Old Testament. Uh, not me. It's not familiar to a lot of folks it's because it's something that's on the dry side. But it's one of the books of Moses. And we're going to find out in the history that there's, in God's holy writ, there's been a plague before. And I need to address that and let you know what they'll say to the Lord. We're going to be looking at Numbers, the 16th chapter. And we're going to be looking at, specifically, uh, verses... Um, 44 through 50. I'm going to read that for you. Number 16 chapter, verses 44 through verse 50. And you find these words, and it says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, and I will I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. And Aaron spoke as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation, and behold, the plague was begun among the people, and he put incense, and he made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stayed. Now, they that died in the plague were 14,700, besides them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. I want to use for a subject this morning, Faith guides our lives. Faith guides our lives. First of all, we need to understand that this is a book, one of the books of Moses, and specifically it's a book that uh, talks about the fourth book of Moses. And specifically it starts off and it says in verse chapter 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the numbers of their names, every male by their pole, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel. Thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And I fast forward now to chapter 16. We're looking here, and we're looking at a unique subject about faith guides our lives. 
Now, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith means primarily for a firm persuasion. A conviction based on hearing is used in the New Testament as a faith in God or in Jesus Christ. The main elements of faith in its relation to the invisible God as distinct from faith in man are especially brought forth when, one, a firm conviction producing a full acknowledgement of God in revelation or truth. I'll say that again, a firm conviction producing a full acknowledgement of God's revelation of truth. Number two, a personal surrender to him. A personal surrender to him. And number three, a conduct inspired by such surrender. Prominence is given to one or other of these elements according to the context. All of these stand in contrast to belief it's pure natural exercise, which consists of an opinion held in good faith without necessary reference to its proof. We must find some proof. And brothers and sisters, we have proof because there is a record, the oldest record known to mankind, and that is the record of the Jews. The Jews. We find now after the flood, uh, 900 years, God told Abraham he was going to make a great nation out of it. So we find right now that God keeps his word and God keeps his promises. The Bible is basic instruction before leaving earth. The Bible was given and it precedes the Greek. It precedes the Romans. It precedes philosophy, Plato, Aristotle, and even heresy. It precedes all of those. And we have a historical record because God gave us something to be able to look at. And the faith we're looking at today, brothers and sisters, is our faith must guide our lives. We must be mindful that a trust in God. So we should have some evidence and we need some proof that will help us in these trying times right now. We hear a lot of different things that's going on. This plague has got everybody upset. But I need you to understand that was a, another plague back in biblical days. I know we heard about the plague that God gave Pharaoh and the firstborn died to let the children of Israel go. But now we're looking in the book of Numbers. And what I'm going to do for you I'm going to read for you because there's something that's real interesting. Because he stood between the dead and the living in verse 48, and the plague stayed. And what's significant is, now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Besides them that died about the manner of Korah. Now, the manner of Korah ties in here, so that puts us in a place that, that was super, then supernatural had to transpire. And what happened is, in the 16th chapter of the book of Numbers, we find that the children of Israel have come to the place and they were getting ready to cross over to go into the promised land. And the 12 spies came back. Ten had a bad report, but two had a good report. The two said, we can take it. Let's go across and have it. But the majority put fear in the congregation. And because of fear of the congregation, when they didn't trust in God, they were looking at their limited resources. They were looking at how the kings and the, the big giants on the other side. In the promised land, the land of Canaan, they were afraid. But we find right now there was a rebellion against the promises what God had made. When I start right here, I'm going to read for you, and it's going to help you understand this Bible lesson today, that our faith guides our lives. Chapter 16, verse 1 said, Now Korah, the son of Israel, the son of Korah, and the son of Levi, and Dan, and Ebron, and the son of Elam, and on, and the son of Pilate, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of, real, of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. We see now, we're looking at the rebellion now of leadership. We have always somebody is not going to go along with us, say the Lord. Isaiah 55, and they said, my thoughts and your thoughts are not the same. My ways and your ways are not the same. So we find now that here we got the children of Israel. 
Now, this is, they done came across into the wilderness. Now they're in the wilderness dwelling. They done did they, they wilderness journey. Now it's time to cross over. But because of fear, there was something implanted in their mind. They wanted to go back to Egypt. And when Moses had heard it, verse 4 said, he fell on his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all this company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy. And will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he has chosen will he cause to come near him. Verse 6 says, This do, take you census, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seeing it a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel, that separated you from the congregation of Israel, to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he has brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and ye seek the priesthood also. Verse 11. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? Verse 12. And Moses sent to call Dan and Abram, the sons of Elab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing? that thou hast brought us up out of the land of flow with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth. And said unto the Lord, Respect not their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said to Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they, and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also and Aaron, each one of you, his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Oh, brothers and sisters, what would happen today if the glory of the Lord would make itself present today? We find now in verse 20, And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and will thou be wroth? with all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dan, and Abram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dan and Abram, on every side. And Dan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents with their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby he shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death, 
of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth opens her mouth, and swallows them up, and all they appertain unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground cave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. The houses and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods, they and all that apprehended to them, went down alive into the pit and the earth closed up upon them and they perished from among the congregation. And all of Israel that were round about fled at the cry of them for they said, <clears throat> least the earth swallows us up also. We're looking here at 253 men, not counting the children, the men, the boys, or the little children. And it came to pass as there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, that ye take up the censers out of the burning, scatter them, thy fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against the words of their own souls. Let them make broad plates for covering of the altar. For they offered them before the Lord, therefore they are hallowed. They shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers with them. They were burnt and offered, and they made broad plates of a covering of the altar to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah and as his company, as the Lord said unto him by the hand of Moses. But on tomorrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. We find now how easy it is to forget what God has done. So tomorrow, that early the next day, it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Besides them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the plague was stayed. Brothers and sisters, I want you to let you know the historical record of God's word validates that this what we're going through is not the first time something like this magnitude is going on. We find right now that God put something in place to as a historical record to let us know the power of prayer. Brothers and sisters, we should heed to the government and what people are saying about take precaution. 
Use common sense. Do not put yourself in harm's way. There's a lot of people who think a lot of different things and not taking this thing seriously. What we're dealing with here is something that's of the magnitude of the Lord has got his hands on it. Brothers and sisters, we need to be cautious. Do wash your hands. Take care of everything you need to do that's being told in news media. Whatever you do, don't go against what's been put in place because the authorities God has already put in place because this has been set up from eternity past. God is not surprised. God already knows this was going on. And take precaution with the information that's been given to you and the use of technology. Now, I've been asked to join a prayer chain of a mil to have a million people praying for this time like this. And I want to extend an invitation to you. If you can pray and get a prayer through, and not only you, but invite eight people that you know can pray. And just continue on because prayer is what's needed right now. We find now after Moses interceded and prayed and made an atonement. And when Aaron went out and he used the incense in the middle, he was able to stand between the dead and the living. Brothers and sisters, you and I have a unique situation today. We have an opportunity to stand between the dead and the living. We have an opportunity because if we listen to the news media, there's people that's dying along the way in this play, but there's some that's still living. And while we're still living at the blood running through our veins, we have an opportunity to stand between the living and the dead like Aaron. We can be able to pray and talk to the Lord. And when God is ready, only then it's going to change. Because we find out that's something that's more, nothing more powerful than God. That he is the creator of everything. He knows everything. And not only that, but the atonement he's made that's greater than all of that was the atonement he did when he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come for you and I, sin. And when we look at that, what he's done and what he's paid for, all we've got to do is believe that God has sent something to be able to help us. And we realize that on that dusty road, they nailed his hands and they ripped his feet. But Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And when they raised him up between earth and glory, the sun refused to shine. They tell me the moon dripped away in a long line of blood. And creation shook and trembled like a drunken man. And there was a mean soldier there that said, surely, surely. He must be the son of God. And I heard Jesus and I read in the book, he looked up to glory and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he died. And when he died, he laid his head in the locks of his shoulders. And then they took him down and they put him in the ground. They put a rock inside of a rock, but they had the rock of ages inside the rock. But it was early Sunday morning when creation shook and tremble once again. And, but he got up with all power in his hands. Now, 50 days later, he stepped on a prancing cloud and on a trembling mountain. And he started rising on that cloud. And two angels stood there and looked at the men of Galilee, saying, you men of Galilee, why are you standing here gazing? That same Jesus, that same Jesus, he's coming back. And when he sat back and he went on up to glory, in Revelation, as an angel with one foot in the sea and the other on dry land, got a horn in his hand looking up to glory. Say how loud, how loud to blow this horn. Jesus said, blow it slow and easy. Blow it slow and easy, because time has been, shall be no more. And in the morning, in the morning, will you be there in the sweet by and by, when the, all the saints of God will come marching in. Brothers and sisters, I hope I've given you something about God's historical record, God's word that he has given us and mandated, and the Holy Spirit wrote it down and allowed Moses to pen it for you and I to be able to see it here in 2020. Your faith guides our lives. We pray mildly, if you don't mind, to pray for us as we pray for you in God's name. Okay. Thank you for attending and watching us. You pray for us and we pray for you. Thank you, Brother Chase. Right? Come on. Sister Lance is going to sing for us. I know the Lord, yeah, Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. I know the Lord oh, yes. will make a way. Yes, he will. He'll make a for me and for you, he'll see us safely through. Yes, he 
Yes, you will. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. I have a Savior who I can tell. Oh, yeah. All of my troubles too. And when I'm burdened and I just don't know what to do, I go to him in secret prayer. Lord, I can leave my burdens there. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Because I have a Savior oh, who I can tell all of my troubles to. And when I'm discouraged, when I'm in despair, when I'm troubled, when I'm burdened down, when I'm overwhelmed, when I just don't know what to do, I go to him in secret prayer. Lord, I can leave my burdens there. Yeah, Lord. I know the Lord yes. will make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, oh yes, he will. He'll open doors for me and for you. Hello. The Lord is going to see a safe through. Yes, he will. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. I want to thank Sister Landry for that. Gracious Master, we thank you for the coming and closing. We thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for this privilege and the use of technology. We thank you for looking through the steeple banks of time and understand this day and age we need technology to be able to reach out and touch the souls of our members and lost ones. We thank you right now, gracious Master, for this privilege and the visitation of your Holy Spirit. The Holy Master, if you don't mind, keep us and hold us according to your will. Now, we're going to be so careful to give you the praise. We're going to be so careful to give you the glory. The words of our mouth and meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, I strengthen our redeemer. And Jesus' mighty man, make his name we pray. Grace, mercy, and truth, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, let it rest with and abide with us now, till the saints come together again, and they all said, Amen. God bless you.